Today I'm joined by soprano Gila Plitman. Gila is known for her incredibly virtuosic, pure, ethereal, high coloratura opera voice. And I got to hear her sing at the Los Angeles Philharmonic when I first moved out to LA and I was floored by her. Um, I'm very lucky that I got to meet her a couple of years ago and we actually worked together. She is an immense supporter of new music and she workshopped some arias and art songs of mine. So today I'm really excited to share with you our conversation about healing through creativity. Hi, Gila. Hi, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How are you doing? Good. It's be so beautiful to see you. I can't even describe it. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Um, I've always admired how vulnerable you are as a singer and a performer and, and honestly as a person. And um, so you were the very first person that came to mind when I thought of, you know, who would maybe want to talk about creativity uh, during the pandemic and um, how you're coping. So yeah. <laughs> something we're all let me say that you say coping and that word just brings up all this right <laughs> in terms of having to really struggle for for kind of a basic survival I haven't had that and I'm just I just really say thank you every day and I know there have been people that that's the way that it's affected them um to me I mean you know I mean I try to approach every single thing that I can as a gift. <laughs> and um, sometimes it takes some, some internal work from us human beings. But I really, I, I really now believe, at least for, for my own life, that there's, there's something in seeing what comes and just continuing a practice of rather than like feeling the, the feeling of, of difficulty is absolutely good and okay. It's an indication. It's a teacher. Um, but I guess the, the quality of fetching is the one that I'm, I'm trying to really heal in my life. And this kind of internal, um, almost like self-victimization and, and victimization from the outside world and, not, and recognizing that it's all something that we that one can use as, as a kind of tool of learning how to open our hearts even more. Um, that, that's been my experience for this time period. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I, I, I'm sure for you too, I mean, you, you're always such a fountain of creativity. And there is something for us professional creatives that's maybe very healthy in this, the kind of calm sure. and, and the need to, to start or to re, reconnect with our creativity is something that doesn't have to reach a goal um, and, and create some kind of product or a deadline thing or a, right? And that essence that is like our childlike creative that is has been there and will always be there and sometimes maybe we forget and it's such a good thing to say well there's no there's no official work right now what what do i love about being creative in my life that has nothing to do with that and um i certainly have been finding a lot of paths and um and a kind of flow of things that have come into my life without even expecting because of opening up to that. Yeah. Right? Have you been, or how have you been reconnecting to your more childlike impulses or early creative impulses? If you're willing to share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I'm just, now I'm like, does ice cream mountains with, with like every possible thing on top count? I yeah. guess so, you know, like just experiment, but I, I think experimentation is the yeah. name of the game, right? Yeah. And, um, and I think internally as, as a grow, as a little bit messed up grownups, 
we're always kind of working on the release of, of judges, self judges, external judges, whatever delusional things we, we think or the stories we create. And some of this experimentation has come for me actually in doing things that have nothing to do even with music, whether it's a lot of cooking with my son, with myself, trying things out, um, some drawing, um, things that I actually have been kind of more immersed in in later years uh, because of my, my life kind of changing in that way anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, but even more now, you know, it, just writing poems, starting a story in my head, um, and then and then putting it a little bit onto the computer, uh, doing a lot of kind of uh, manual creativity that I I don't I have a real kind of um, reluctance from. I always thought I'm not so good at this, you know, and I've been surrounded by people who are really, really good, good at it, uh, which I admire, and kind of being in a place where it's like, no, I'll just try it. I'll try painting a, drawing a, you know, a flower or, yeah, or doing some calligraphy or whatever it is that kind of gets those, those fun juices and then even throwing it away, right, 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 right away, yeah. Because there's no, there are no rules anymore. There's no deadlines. There's no limits. I mean, in that sense, it can be very freeing that it is just play. Yeah. Have you, have you found that that's been your experience too? Yeah, I've been kind of returning to, well, even just these videos that I'm making are just kind of, for me, they make me feel like I'm acting again when I was, you know, little or... Um, also just playing music with Zach, my partner, um, who's, you know, not a classical musician. He's a songwriter and, and sort of doing more kind of like pop folk. Um, yeah, cooking is absolutely a big one too. Baking, <laughs> collage. Let's start with the baking. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, are any of your your calligraphy or drawings or your stories um, are they informing your your singing practice in any way and and are you still singing I mean I see your yeah, no actually that's yeah. that's the interesting thing that the practice has become even deeper in a sense it's almost I've been practicing my guitar more I've been taking guitar lessons I I, I kind of experimented with a lot of online lessons. I'm still taking these acting classes that I love online. Um, I've been taking voiceover lessons. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah. yeah, all kinds of these, the, you know, um, audio recording things, how to use my voice in ways that I've always wanted to and just, it, it just went a different way. And, and also learning about for, for me as a, as a blonde soprano, you know, for whatever that's worth, that even um, some people are more tech savvy. I never really, it, it never really is a, like this kind of exciting draw for me. And it, this has been an opportunity to say, well, can I at least learn how to use logic on the computer? And hard. just record one track and just, yeah. you know, just do a little bit of stuff that I never really, um, yeah, instill, installed, instilled, and mm -hmm. kind of had to have a chance to, to get into. And it doesn't mean, again, right? It doesn't mean I'm going to make a profession of it. It's more kind of, oh, that's interesting. And, and it does, I love what you're saying about even playing different musics with Zach, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And kind of going, oh, I can use my voice in the, that way. Or, oh, I like that chord progression that I never really was playing around with and you know the I, I think that's wonderful and you've been playing music with your son too right yeah he's something else. <laughs> I mean we do you know sometimes sometimes it's more like Ash can we please um, <laughs> and he's you know he's almost 15 and right. mostly it's like leave my room now um, and it's all really really good he's just um, he really is a light and when the times come that we get to do stuff together, it's, uh, it's like heaven to me. It's really, there's nothing, hardly anything like it. 
and it's it's these these ways of of connecting and of uh, paying attention and listening and being together <laughs> that are really are really quite special. Yeah, I was struck by what you said at the beginning of our conversation about how you kind of have to be okay with difficulty um, and sort of that being a part of daily life. I feel like that's something that I'm still learning how to do. Um, and when I do feel this sort of that resistance or that, that sense of discomfort um, or kind of emotional anguish, um, it, it does, I'm finding, you know, kind of shut my creative flow down. Um, so I'm curious if you have any advice about, I mean, it's a big question, but. No, I, I, first of all, thank you for sharing that. I, I actually was like feeling it bodily as you we were talking about it um, from you. Yeah. I did. Let me ask you, do you, and I, I have a feeling that the answer is this, but you, do you have a practice of meditation? You know, I, I don't. Um, and it's possibly something missing from my life. Um, I do a lot of journaling. Um, and I, cool. It yeah. doesn't, I mean, that, it's so funny. I asked you a question. That's even, it's, it's so funny how we, even your answer was kind of like, I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Right. Or I'm, which was not the intention at all. And it's, right. it's interesting how we, and that's okay too. That's okay too. It's part of our process. Um, it was more, it was more to kind of find a mutual language, but I'm just going to talk about it from where I, where I, um, process and then you know and maybe if it helps anybody and then that's wonderful i um you, journaling is meditation too by the way and and you can find your own you know it's not just sitting sitting quietly with eyes closed right it, it, that's just one one way or one aspect and you have to kind of a little bit like the right diet or you know or the right exercise or whatever it is you find what's what's holistic to your being and not it's there's no rules about it same like really no rules um for me uh so because of a kind of um uh upheaval in my in my awareness of life that happened when when i uh when i separated from eric a few years back and it had to, to do um I mean, those, those events are always really hard yeah. for everybody. Uh, but it was, there was something about it that was more about how am I seeing life and how am I approaching difficulty, exactly what you're talking about. And it brought, you know how life will bring you all these things that you kind of need when you're open. And it brought this, um, really this plethora of, that hasn't stopped and, and it's, I think it's endless really, um, of things that have to do with um, meditation and uh, ways, it, a Tibetan Buddhism and self-healing and sound healing and all these things that I'm, now I'm actually even, it really, I feel like I, I just, have hit the kind of the pinky, you know, it's really opening up. It's amazing what, and I think the world is kind of opening up to it alongside me, which is such a gift because it's coming, it's coming to me because of that. So um, there's all these practices that come from those traditions from kind of Eastern and meditation that literally have to do with you know, we, we, we started off calling it presence and mindfulness yeah. in the West, right? Maybe a couple like decades ago when it started being introduced in a more kind of uh, formal way. Um, it's the, the thing about it is that what it does, it's not a fixer. It's, it's just something that puts you in a place where you're, you're kind of, allowing that difficulty exactly like you're doing like you like, like what you're saying and for me there's a number of actual practices that that 
-hmm. when I'm feeling that discomfort, even if it's just, I'm in the supermarket and something about, you know, the interaction with the person in front of me is just a little like, uncomfortable, right? We all have whatever social, rather than this kind of running away or shutting off or trying to, um, to kind of get rid of it, right? As if it's then this quality of, oh, it's here and it's okay. And kind of getting into the energy of it um, and allowing it in a sense to be a catalyst for opening my heart more. Uh, there's names and people that I, I've, I follow Shambhala, um, not, not, not as a dogma. I, I really kind of meander between anything that, that kind of rings true to me. But for some reason, um, there's a woman whose name is Pema Chodron. Uh, yeah. A lot of people know her. Yeah, she's uh, this wonderful Tib Tibetan monk um, kind of speaker that, that has helped many, many people. And I listened to her a lot for, for a couple of years. And there's, the, there's these, oh God, I can't remember. There's this one practice in particular that has to do with like actually breathing in the difficulty mm. and I remember the name of it I'll either text to you or I'll you know, it'll <laughs> pop out of my mouth but I can't remember it right now so forgive me um and it's brought other practices like that some of it ha some of them have to do with sound I think we're musicians there's this wonderful gift in our lives because sound um it just affects us in this whole body way, <laughs> right? Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll walk down the street and I'll be listening to a song or even just to a melody or even just to natu a natural sound, a bird, right? Wind in trees, whatever it is. And, um, and I kind of, I start giggling to myself because <laughs> I, I'm like, I... I think, I think that's what being on, I, I'm not really a person that's ever really tried drugs. Just to, that's just not something that connected with me. And I'm like, I think this is what being on drugs is like. <laughs> because it does this thing. It does this amazing thing to me where I just become kind of one with all, all of creation <laughs> because of this connection of, of sound. Yeah. Um, and of course, sight does that too. Do you get to spend some time outside every day? Do I do. It's interesting that you ask that because, um, you know, we're in my, well, I'm in, we're, I'm pretending we're in my studio. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> um, actually what I've been doing every morning is m essentially moving my entire studio out into our backyard. And Zach helps me do this. You know, we lift the piano up and we bring it outside and I, plug it you know I got an outdoor extension cord and everything and and um it's really the only way I was able to start writing again um was to sort of and and also getting up at six in the morning um because it's so hot now you know by 11 so just like those morning hours where I'm just I'm out and I'm outside and I kind of create this illusion for myself I mean this, this is the luxury of Los Angeles um but yeah of of being in nature and and sort of being creative in that way and then it's it sort of frees me up a little bit instead of you know usually I mean, your music has always taken from those elements anyway yeah. you know it connects so deeply and that it not only makes sense to me obviously but i'm sure there's again some kind of creative threads that are being twined um, just from you allowing yourself that, like that step outside, I think that's amazing. And I can't tell you how much time I spend outside. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. sit outside? Sometimes. I mean, I try not to freak out people too much, you know? <laughs> You're yeah. happy, flats, and yeah. Also, yeah, you know, I mean, it is LA, so you can kind of behave almost any way you want out in the street. Right. But, but, but I, I try to kind of stay somewhat 
in this reality when I'm when I'm out with people. Uh, but I do. I, I wake up super early too. I love that, and uh, it's such a special hour. It's those those hours are so special, yeah. and there's this quietness. And then I actually can, of course, not out loud, but I can do humming and and. Um, I do some mantra singing too. That's another kind of practice that I've gotten into that also connects with all of those things, meditation, sound healing, uh, kind of centering. So sometimes I'll do my mantra singing while I'm walking outside. Oh, and um, yeah. So you found, um, I mean, I don't know if they'd be called technical, well, I guess they're kind of technical slash spiritual practices that kind of connect your voice to your body and your sense of emotional well-being or how, how have you found those? Um, again, experimentation, but that's exactly, I love the way you kind of framed it. That's, I, that what I, I think what I'm talking, what I'm trying to, to kind of unfold with you is that I, I really think it's kind of a new path for me in terms of the realization that um, that there's an ocean of of more information and 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 discovery and self-discovery and even in uh, within our artistic community ways of us creating things that maybe maybe combine these kind of things um so i also got into sound baths have you ever done okay <laughs> so <laughs> sounds good the gist of of a sound bath is that there are um kind of healers that have been working for for decades and 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 centuries not not themselves but through the centuries on, um, for instance, a crystal that that sounds the the note of a. What does it? How does it affect your body? And these kind of things, right? Does yeah. that make kind of sense? Yeah, yeah. So then uh, now it's there's just uh, just like a yoga class that you can right. go to that also connects you within kind of your center and your your inner alignment and all of these wonderful things. Um, there's also more and more of these kind of classes that have to do with sound. And um, a sound bath is just a, a kind of event that you go to that um, a person who's learned about these effects has all these crystals and uh, gongs and bells and things like, like that. And it's an hour of kind of immersing yourself within those sounds. And they're amazing. I'll take you to one when, when they, <laughs> when they come back. <laughs> yeah, when they come back. Exactly. Yeah. I could imagine it could be fun to try to recreate some of those sounds with your voice. Like <laughs> completely. And I um I mean maybe this is getting too personal, but that's okay, right? Because that's like you said, that's kind of the way I'm so, I'm just, I, I give up. If that's what you wanted me to be, world, that's okay. But um a lot of times when I have um uh, when I'm going through some kind of emotional hardship, yeah. uh, then I will I will get into a place of humming or um, sitting at a piano or under a tree and just kind of finding the 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 sound vibrations, whatever it is, you know, that allows that kind of place that I'm feeling the hardship in. <laughs> Yeah. to to get filled with the sound and it it does it makes it does a thing it really does a thing <laughs> yeah it's so fascinating because i wonder if you know i feel like as a composer um you know school is and academia is so focused on this intellectual technical analytical side and um i wonder sort of if I kind of missed out in this sense of at least, you know, as a singer or even as a musician, there's, you know, or an actor and a, or a dancer, there's a, a real cultivation of your relationship with your body um, and the actual physical act of creating the music. And I feel like 
um, in conservatory, it's all very analytical and very, you know, high concept. <laughs> um, and I, you know, kind of forget that it, it is actually about physical vibration. And so I, I don't have a way of bringing that into my practice. I mean, okay. So firstly, you write incredible music, so you're doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> and and um and to, even your awareness to it is is a it, again it's so i mean you're you're a little you're you're a child so you've got ages and years and yeah. how long, and also if you discover something like this when you're 90 so what right uh that you've been intellectual all, you know all your 90 years and all of a sudden you're like i think i need to dance in my living room to, to create music awesome um I, I'd say, again, how wonderful that you are talking about this out loud and, and that you are probably discovering and going to discover more and more, and a lot of artists are, I think, these kind of more organic, you know, wavy, visceral connection ways of how we create the art that we create. And it's probably going to also then the purpose of it might start shifting too because it might connect with people in a way that maybe is more healing or more or gets them to move more or whatever it is right? right are you homeschooling your son i mean like are you having to deal <laughs> i'm just curious you know what oh my god how are you trying to help him as well through this period as yourself well again you know every child is they all have been taking it in a different way he for him it's actually been a really good thing in many ways yeah. uh i think his learning his, his kind of learning style gets a little too anxious and pressured when when in the environment of um just the public school classroom yeah and uh there's something about it just being in a way on on their own time right that that can be very very healthy and very good for certain children. Yeah. Um, it there hasn't been too much of a structure. Um, I used to be super super structured with him. I've I've changed quite a bit as a mom too. <laughs> I mean, also you know he's it's different age and all this, and uh, it's a lot more of kind of taking a step back and letting him learn his own lessons and doing his own process and doing that kind of thing. Um, he also more and more spends time with his dad, which is wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And uh, they they love each other and they teach each other so much. And then I get a little time off, which is really great. Important. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, the school has been, it's been what it's been. Uh, yeah. They, yeah, he's, he, we, 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 I cajole him to do the work. So does his dad. Uh, some of it gets done really late. It somehow gets done. Uh, now it's summertime, thank goodness. And next, you know, and it, the school year starts in a couple of weeks and uh, we'll see. I yeah. wanted to ask you what, you know, what creative projects you're, you're working on. <laughs> Maybe I should ask you that. that. <laughs> oh my God. We're not. Or not. No, really, like it's literally, I kind of am, I float from day to day these days. Um, there's all these things in the plans, you know? Right. There's all these composers that want to write this piece and that, and we all kind of started it with little right. steps. We'll see, we'll see where things go. Um, I've got wonderful management, so eventually all these things will start turning around. I really, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of day to day for me. Yeah. Uh, and. It, there's no, again, now I've never been a huge structure thinker like, like composers are, um, which I admire, or writers, or, you know, there's, there's a brain that can kind of build that. Um, I'm more kind of moment to moment anyway. That's kind okay. of my, my creature. But, but what's been happening, it's been incredibly creative as a yeah. period of time. And part of it is because I'm just following the impulse, like, oh, this song? And then, oh, this guy that I love working with, do you want to do, you know, and then we just do it. Um, 
yeah. So really, I I don't have this kind of meta beautiful answer for you about this. No, that's I great. I mean, I I just <laughs> I really kind of need structure and I need deadlines and um, yeah. So the whole like go with the flow day to day is uh, quite challenging for yeah. me if, since my deadlines are all kind of far Still away. <laughs> I've been bouncing back and forth between pieces, which I don't usually do. Um, I usually am only, because of my tight deadlines, I'm usually only on focused on one piece. So now I'm kind of jumping back and forth based on what mood I'm in and like what, what world I wanna be in at that moment. Cause sometimes I don't wanna write about the pandemic. Like, or I don't want, you know, I, I wanna pretend I'm somewhere else. Um, so Tell I- Tell me, to talk to me more about that. That sounds fascinating. Does are you going, is it moment to moment? Like, do you wake up and it's like some kind of gut feeling or that you want to work on that or work on that? Or where does that come from? Well, my gut feeling in the morning is usually that I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. So it's usually like, okay. <laughs> How can I? This is pre-pandemic. This is this is this is hilarious. Yeah. Um, how can I kind of get excited about? And then it usually becomes about an image or a story, um, and I think part of that does come from kind of like honestly, just kind of the high pressure of some of my commissions, which. Yeah you know, is, is something I'm, I'm really grateful for, but it's also, like you said, I, I, I am, you know, kind of like a baby <laughs> in terms of, uh, you know, I'm young. And so sometimes I, I feel like if I start thinking about, okay, well, what, what is, what is the first violinist, the Boston Symphony going to play here? You know, then, then like, there's nothing happening. So, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of about, so honestly, like the, um, the not wanting to work comes from being anxious about whether the work is going to be good enough or whether it's going to be um, how as yeah really reaching what I want it to sound like. Wow, that's a lot of self awareness right there, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's sort of um, something I've been think you know working on and thinking about for a long time, and kind of why I wanted to start doing this series is because I feel like it is this aspect of writing that is not um, talked about as much or not talked about in the circles where we are learning to be writers. Um, and you kind of have to go you ever out. Done the artist's Way? Yes, I love The Artist's Way. Uh, <laughs> I love that book. That yeah, was- and you know, There's a whole community of people now that, yeah. Yeah, because that also, it's it, see this is that's meditation too it's 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 ways of kind of instead of quetching right going right. To, let's let's what what does life what is life calling me to do right now right in within yeah yeah what do you think gave you like or how did you give yourself that kind of freedom to to go with the flow what like have you always been like that or uh did you have to build that within yourself it changes through the years as i learn more about myself so in a way it's always a little bit of a surface answer sure because i i, I know that in a few years i'll understand differently mm -hmm. um what one thing that i do know in, in a really good way about myself and as as that's that's kind of gone followed me <laughs> um is that death is never too far mm -hmm. and uh i don't know i don't know when that started i i think really young but i can't remember okay and and maybe one day i'll remember and i i'm not sure it matters or it doesn't sure uh but there's something about this kind of knowledge um certain times in my life I think I was fighting it you know you you go there's some quality of it that um is very freeing in in the sense that I recognize 
that anything can end completely end at any any moment mm -hmm. and um in a way things don't i get surprised by things it's more kind of like oh that's not what i was expecting and then it's it's this kind of openness to okay i'm still alive okay so let's see now let's see now where where this goes and uh, at least for this age, there's something about it that has um, put things in a perspective where I know nothing is really all that. Things are important in that they, they're they meaningful. Esh and I talk about this too. Um, he's, he's in that teenage age. He's like, so Ima, have you realized this morning that everything is meaningless and so you can do whatever you want? Okay, so he'll say it like that. And I'll be like, yeah. So from my my point of view, Shoni, it's all really meaningful, and it, none of it is that important. It's kind of more like that for me. Um, and then things that are kind of more socially accepted as embarrassing, or I, I sometimes I fall into them, but I kind of let them go. Like, oh, I made a fool out of myself, or oh, I said the wrong thing, or. I'm revealing too much or, you know, um, and it also, also kind of keeps me in a moment. Um, that's for me being on stage and music and art are, are those, they do a thing that allows me to just feel like now, you know, all that Eckhart Tolle <laughs> and all the, all, all those kind of concepts that are just kind of not worrying about, what's going to be and not too much analyzing and yupping yupping about what was and who said what and why and all this stuff. Um, no, I still do. I do. I do. I'm a, I'm human. Right. I'm have my, that it's kind of what mind does anyway. Right. right. Um, but I've actually, I, I've actually been learning through teachers now, uh, you know, that, through certain practices, some of it has to do with just practices that actually our mind, it's more, um, it's really supposed to be a, a play, a playing ground, a playful instrument rather than a problem solver or um, a, a like decider or, you know, um, and that most solutions and most things kind of happen in a way that isn't we sometimes we think we we did them but they kind of get done by themselves mm -hmm. um i'm sure you experience that with writing music uh that you have a certain idea a certain plan uh -uh -uh, right but what 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 conspires, it's kind of all these energies of the universe eventually coming together to something. Right. Um, and I know I'm kind of talking all over the place. No, 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 it, it makes sense, yes. Yeah. I've never thought about just your mind being a playground. That's really yeah. cool. I've thought about that in my art, but not in my life necessarily. In, in it, life experiences, uh, if I'm just continuing a practice of kind of honing in and being mindful um, and also being self-forgiving for times when I'm not, right. uh, then when I'm aware that my mind is doing this wacky thing where it's like trying to solve all the problems of the universe in my life, you know, or talking about some event, these things that we do, yeah. when the awareness comes, it's this wonderful kind of sight, and then I just let it go, and then it's more about playing. Again, just being playful. And uh, and all of a sudden, the onus, right? That pressure, that anxiety right. that you talk about, <laughs> Boston first violinist, uh, whatever, you know? Yeah. It kind of goes away. It's like, it doesn't matter, you know? Boston, that that he's he's gonna, think what he thinks anyway and right 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 it's completely not up to me and um he's right. probably thinking a million things too and about right. his right about his children and about yeah. right <laughs> and yeah and there's just just 
um, and approach more and more for, for the mind as playground. I like, I like that we're talking about this. Yeah, and, and playing with pattern, which is what artists kind of do, right? Yeah. Which has to do with experimentation. It break, brings us back to it. Um, because then it's, there's no judgment. It's like, oh, that pattern didn't work or that, that, you know, that kind of combination didn't work. Uh, but you just try, you, you, play to, you play around with it rather than going, I shouldn't even do it because I don't know that it's going to work, right? Right. right. Yeah. It, have you ever seen, or, or have you ever, or maybe remember yourself, uh, I remember doing these kind of like <laughs> cooking things with Ash when he was really little. Uh-huh. Um, and with nieces and nephews and, you know, for, for, little uh, friends, little kids, where they, they just have a bowl <laughs> and then they start putting all this stuff inside, hard boiled egg and mustard <laughs> and a pen and you know, and, and maybe some dirt and, right. you know, and then they, make, they went, want you to, to try some, you know, right. have it. Yes. and it smells awful. And uh, there's no sense of any kind of like, pre thinking about the thing it just kind of is a process it's all about let's try this and let's try this and and they and then when it's not good they just chuck it out right move it's on clean, yeah. clean the bowl yeah um and there's something about all that that i find it's at least the way that i prefer to live life these days yeah yeah it's so inspiring to me to hear someone like Gila talk about her childhood love of creativity and how she's allowing herself and encouraging herself to live in that childlike world. And that that is really a place for healing. I think we think so much about the weight of creating art and the pressure of creating great art and it's just very refreshing to hear an artist who I really admire talk about kind of letting go of the deadline and embracing the present moment and the joy of the process itself. In these next months, as I continue to write and we live through this period of the pandemic, I'm going to try to say embrace the difficulty but accept the difficulty and lean into it and acknowledge when I feel it and try to bring it along with me while I write instead of um, pushing it away or trying to fix it. I think that was a very valuable piece of advice that Gila shared with me that I'm very grateful for and I'm grateful to you for listening. Thanks.